Well, Patty, congratulations uh, on the victory. A hard fought one out there tonight. I guess first and foremost, can we get a health update? Do you know the, the status of the foot, the ankle right now? No, I haven't got a clue, lad. I'm going to have to get an MRI and x ray The doctor said he'll do it Monday, so I'll know from then. Got to get this MRI and x ray as well. Jared's got one hard head. So the hand might be broken as well? Not the hand, it's my fingers here. These, these like, little knuckles here. It's the fat. Yeah. Well, you know, obviously we talk about when you fight, there's all these expectations. It's almost like if you don't come in and, you know, destroy them in the first round, that you're good. So I guess, you know, going through a three-round war like that, how do you feel right now about the performance? I'm sound, you know what I mean? Everyone's got an opinion, lad. The opinions are assholes, you know what I mean? Everyone's got one. I know I won that fight, simple as. I deal in facts, lad, and I won a unanimous decision. It's not even like it was a split decision. Look at his face and look at mine. Fights get scored on damage now. I, I landed a lot more damage. End of. I know you had a lot of respect for him as a as a fighter coming in, but was it even more difficult than you thought? Did he have surprises for you? In there? Yeah, he was. It was as I say, he can take a punch, lad. I hit him with some big shots, and he kept coming forward. Hats off to Jared. He's a phenomenal fighter, also a phenomenal human being. Do you, you know, as the fight's unfolding, like I said, it's like people expect you to destroy guys, you know. Is it difficult for you to keep focus and keep confidence knowing that, you know, the fans probably want you to get them out of there in one and, you know, you got to kind of grind your way? No, I'm pretty happy now because I've done, I've just done my first ever three, five minute rounds in the UFC against a tough opponent who I know has cardio. And I could have pushed it more in that third round, but I coasted a bit. I thought I'm two rounds off, I'll coast it a bit, especially with the ankle, you know what I mean? I, I, I shouldn't have. It's my own silly fault. I shouldn't have coasted in the third round, but control time means nothing when you don't do nothing with it. Last thing for me, I mean, obviously, we're going to have to figure out what the health status is before you book anything, but do you see something? What's next for yourself as far as, like, a place or a, a headline or an opponent? What's next? I don't care, lad. You know what I mean? People keep saying, oh, you're going to fight the top 15, you're going to fight him, you're going to fight him. Everyone talks about me, lad. That's how they, they stay relevant. People mention me to stay relevant, lad, so I don't care. Whoever's name's on the contract next, I'll fight, but I've got to, I've got to sort this ankle out first. Paddy, don't you right? Dana was in here, and he said that he thinks that Jared's game plan going into the third round was horrible. Do you think the same? Yeah. I actually I compared it before to no one Sean O'Malley hurt his ankle. He should have tried to stay standing with me because my ankle was pretty compromised in that third round. I was worried about my ankle, so because of that, I think if he would have, if he would have tried to strike with me a bit more, he would have caught me more because I couldn't move properly. My foot wasn't hundred percent, so I think if he would have stayed striking with me, he would have, he would have had a lot more success because me, me mobility was a little bit, a little bit stuck. You know what I mean? I would have been stuck in the mud when he started pushing me against the cage. I was like, sound, let's let's chill. You know what I mean? And then. I was landing more significant strikes with me back on the cage. You know what I mean? I think he landed three or four significant strikes in the third round. I was landing knees to the body, knees to the face, little elbows, little punches. As I say, fight to scored on damage now and look at his face and look at mine. And obviously he's saying about the referee as well. Dana thinks, you know, you should have done a better job of breaking it up. There was a bit of inactivity against the fence. Were you ever like, look, he's not doing anything to me? Like, you know, we need to separate it? No, as I said, my ankle was a bit compromised, lad. So when he was say, when he was older, me dad, I was like, Sam, Jared, let's chill. You know what I mean? Let's just base off here because the more I separate, the more I have to put weight on my ankle and the more I have to end up worried about getting in a bad position with my foot because it was, it was bad. Like as soon as I kicked him in the first round, I put my foot down and went, oh, what, what, what's happened there? And then I was thinking about my foot and where I was worrying about my foot, he left off me. I was like, oh, yeah, you're in a fight pad. Stop worrying about your foot. Let's focus on the fight at hand. <laughs> is it an injury that you've like had before? Do you kind of suspect what it is or do you not know? No, I don't know, know what I mean? I've had ankle injuries before, lad, know what I mean? But... I feel like there's something in my ankle floating about. It's a bit weird, you know what I mean? I don't know what it is. I've got a splint on my ankle now. I'm getting it looked at on Monday. Hopefully it's not too bad and I can focus on fighting still, but I don't know. I'm hoping I don't need surgery. <laughs> Obviously four wins in four. Your Christmas is on the horizon. I think you've got a holiday to, Thail uh, to pa Thailand, right, in January. Yeah. You know, how have you sum up this year, given this your co-main event, pay-per-view debut? Sound, isn't it? It's been a good year. 
3 and 0, two finishes. I've just went a full 15 with a very tough opponent who, as I say, he comes to fight every time, lad, and he's got the cardio for 15 minutes, and I won by unanimous decision. That's all that matters. So I really, I've had a brilliant year, an absolutely brilliant year, and long may they continue. Just one from one of you, sorry. Everyone makes a big deal about the the diet outside of camp. Do you, do you really not care what you're going to do from now between the next one? You know, everyone makes up, but you go almost to light heavyweight limit as you're eating a, a pizza there, I'm guessing it is. No, that's a cookie, that lad. Oh, cookie, okay, okay. Do you, do you, you know, not care in between now? Do you just go do what you want? I don't give a flying fuck what anyone's got to say about me. I turn up, I'm weight in shape. That's all that matters. Cheers, mate. Congrats. Patty in the front right here. Uh, you said you, you, when you coasted in round three, uh, were your coaches telling you that you had won the first two rounds, or did you feel it in there that you had won the first I knew two? I'd won the first two. People don't have to tell me. You know what I mean? But when I've looked at the stats after the fight... I think I won all three. In the cage, I thought that he won the third. You know what I mean? And when it said 29, 28, I was like, yeah, good decision. I won the first two, he won the third. But then after looking back at the stats, four significant strikes in the third, console time doesn't mean jack shit anymore, lad. You know what I mean? So immediately after you felt he had won round three, but then in hindsight, you think you won all three? You, you Yeah. And did you say anything to him after? He seems pretty upset and seemed, seemed to leave the octagon. Yeah, uh, no, I spoke, so, spoke to him in the back. He said to me, I thought I won. I was like, lad, you're one tough son of a bitch. You know what I mean? You took some shots there and kept walking forward. Everyone always thinks they won, lad. I've lost two five-round decision fights and I thought I won both. You know what I mean? It's that simple. But, like I said, opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got one. The fact is, I won by unanimous decision. Paddy done it. Obviously, you joked with Joe Rogan about did he pay for the interview. I'm curious, was there any part of you that regretted that thing happening this week with all the comments that you're getting on your Instagram and stuff like that? No, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm unapologetically myself, lad. I've had that bottled up for over a year where he talks shite. I've had all bots commenting on my page. I get on with it, lad. You know what I mean? One of them. Do you think that's an issue that you and Ariel could ever squash, or is that just going to be behind you? I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Fighters are more important. I worry about fighters. Hey, Patty over here. Uh, just out of curiosity, first time fighting in front of a full arena in the United States for the UFC. Just what was that experience? You know what you bring in the UK. What was it like to feel that knowing you're in a completely different country? I felt bad for Jared when he walked out and got booed, to be honest. <laughs> I did, I felt bad for Jared because he's a nice, very nice man and he didn't deserve to get booed, but it just shows how good my fans are and what star power I've got. That walkout was spectacular. That's up there with the O2, you know what I mean, and the Echo Arena in Liverpool. That was special. Lovely walkout. I know you're going on vacation. If Jake Paul hits you up for that sparring session, are you still down or what are your thoughts? Lad, I'm going to have to get my foot looked at before I do anything. <laughs> that goes without saying, lad. Thank you. Paddy. Uh, Jared Gordon, was that the, do you think, the, the toughest fighter that you've faced so far in your career? Yeah, probably. He, give, as I say, lad, he's one tough son of a bitch. The man's had a golf club put over his head and a baseball bat put over his head and hasn't went down. But I, I've hit him with some punches there. Like, I think at the end of the second, if I wouldn't have poked by accident, obviously, if I wouldn't have... Got in, got in his eye, I think I would have finished him there, because I had him rocked, but it's one of them lads, you know what I mean, I'm glad I've done a full 15 in the UFC against another athlete that I know can go 15 minutes easy, and I know for a fact that I won the fight, so as I say, I deal in facts. And how was fight week for you this week without having, uh, having Molly alongside you, the last few UFC fights for you? The pair of you have been on the same card. Has it been slightly different dynamic? Is it not the same having Molly there with you? Fight to fight, lad. We turn off to scrap. You know what I mean? I, I'm i always going to have this media and this big bubble around me whenever I turn up to fight because I put a lot of expectations on my shoulders the way I talk. But I talk to talk and then I walk to walk. Assuming you're fit and good to go early in the new year, I know previously you said you wanted to get over to Vegas and fight in the States. Would fighting on that London card, given that it's a big pay-per-view, would that be something you'd be up for? 
maybe co-main under that that title fight with Leon and uh, Kamara? As my man said, lad, I've got it all the booked in uh, Thailand for January, but I'm not just a fighter now, lad. I'm a businessman. I've got a few business businesses that I'm opening up and a few things that I've invested in. So I'm not just a fighter now, lad. I've got to worry about some of my investments. So I'm, I, I don't know. We'll see. All right, and last one from me. You mentioned you mentioned uh, your outside interest outside of the fight. Tell us about this foundation that you put together. Well, yeah, I've put uh, put together the Baddy Foundation, and I just want to try and give back. You know what I mean, and help people who get forgotten about. So, kids in the UK, we were eating off food banks and are going out in their school uniform on a Saturday and Sunday because they haven't got clothes. I want to try and help people like that, and then obviously. Men's mental health is a big thing to me now after, in my city, there's an epidemic at the minute of people killing themselves, young men. So I just want to help give back. Um, as I said earlier, I want to help Jared. Jared's such a good man and he helps his community so much. So I want to work together with Jared and put some funds together with him and help some of the charities that he works with in his local community because he does so much for them. And, you know, we was enemies for 15 minutes. But we'll be friends for a lifetime. Cheers, thank you. Howdy right here. Uh, Jared just tweeted a few minutes ago saying, you know, I was robbed and everyone knows it. There's a few other fighters who have tweeted out, like, worst decision in UFC history and things along those lines. Um, why do you feel that maybe the outsider perspective is <laughs> so far against you as far as how this fight unfolded? Because I'm me, lad. It's just because it's me. You know what I mean? I don't know... I don't know who was saying. Who else said? Who else thought he won? Any idea? There, there's a lot of people. If you like, kind of look over the fellow fighters on Twitter. You know, Dominic Cruz said he thought it was a, a terrible one. People called it embarrassing. I was sitting next to Dominic Cruz before, and we spoke about it, and I said to him, "Control time means nothing. Damage. Look at my face. Look at Jared's. I, I don't care what anyone says, lad." When you look back in the history books, I've got the little green marker next to my name with a W, so everyone else can suck me arsehole. Thank you. Hey, Paddy. Um, you and Ilya have had a bit of needle this week, and um, he said earlier in this room that the judges uh, gave you a Christmas gift with the decision. Yeah. <laughs> you got a response to that? No. Hand sanitizer, boy, you can keep using my name for some publicity as he wants. Is um, the best way for this war of words with him to be buried with a fight between you both in the future at some point? It could happen. You know what I mean? He looked good tonight. Give him his due. He looked good tonight. He did. Bryce did rock him, though, in the second round. And I am a lot bigger than both of them. You know what I mean? So that could happen in the future. But as I say, I don't know when I'm going to be fighting now. I've got to get this ankle looked at. And if I was him, like, what? He's in the top 10 in the featherweight division now, isn't he? You know what I mean? He's just beat yeah. number nine. Yeah. That just shows how I live in his head rent free. You know what I mean? He's still talking about me, even though he's in the top 10 in featherweight. If I was him, I'd be asking for number five or something. But he's asking for the baddie because he knows who the fucking boy is. Um, I know you said earlier that you don't give a fuck about what people say or think when it comes to the weight gain, but considering Ricky, Ricky Hatton, uh, who also went up and down in weight between camps, retired... He was also a world champion, though, weren't he? Yeah, but if he retired at 28, is the weight gain... Did he retire at 28? That was his first retirement, yeah, and then he came back and lost to Senchenko at 33 or so. I didn't know he retired at 28. Like, I'm 28 in about three weeks, lad. Do you think I'm retiring in three weeks? Not 28, but do you think, <laughs> it's, it's, do you think it's conducive to career? Like no, maybe? no. I do DEXA scans and stuff when I'm going into fights, lad. My RMR doesn't go down, you know what I mean? I do this scientifically. I don't cut big amounts of weight. The top end of the division cut more weight than me. I cut 10 pounds yesterday. I think like Makachev and Poirier and Oliveira and Gagey all cut more than 10 pounds overnight. Easily. Well done with the win. Thank you, bro. Anyone else? No. Peace out, bitches.